We do, Julia. Why, why not much action? I mean, do you think people are, are looking to head to the, the non-farms, ECB meetings, retail sales? I mean, what do you think it is that suddenly brought a, a stop to you like um, the, the gains we had been seeing? Once again, it looks like a bit of a tug of war between what's happening here in Australia and what's happening in the rest of the world. And if we have a look at the RBA decision today, part of it was that we have seen stronger numbers coming out of Australia. We've seen extremely low unemployment rates over here, as, better, as well as better than expected GDP numbers for the first quarter of 2012. But if we have a look at the rest uh, of the world, well, we have seen weaker manufacturing numbers coming through. And in particular, in the US, we saw those ISM manufacturing numbers coming out over overnight and a read of 49.7 so that's the first contraction that we've seen since 2009 in these numbers and that's a fall from 53.5 in the previous month just to add to that, our China's PMI also saw a fall from 50.4 to 50.2 for the official PMI numbers. So I guess still some concerns over what's happening in the rest of the world, although here in Australia things do seem to be looking relatively strong. Having said that, volumes were very light, so it is clear that investors are still seeing, sitting on the sidelines. We only saw $3.3 billion worth of stock being traded, but, but there did seem to be a bias towards some of those higher yielding areas, so it does look like Part of the market still positioning themselves defensively. And if we have a look at the top performance today, we saw stocks like Air New Zealand as well as IINet. Uh, good performance, up by 4.4% today. These are both stocks with a very high yield. On the flip side, though, it does look like some risk may be uh, still being taken out of portfolios. If we have a look at some of the worst performings, performance we saw evolution mining blue scope steel as well as cga mining losing around about 4.4 percent so altogether a bit of a difficult day on the australian share market really dominated by a strange week in global markets where we are watching manufacturing reads as you mentioned james non-farm payroll numbers out on friday out of the u.s and of course in the middle of the week we see the fourth of july holiday in the u.s where we do see the u.s market closed my day are we in a situation that we have had in previous months that if we get a bad number we could almost see stocks rise because it firms the expectation of some sort of qe3 if we get a strong number we see stocks rise because it shows a decent economy but if we just get a sort of a goldilocks read somewhere in the middle that will actually disappoint we're in a stage where the market is uh, putting a bigger probability on more Fed easing the worse the numbers get. And we started to see that yesterday with the U.S. Uh, ISM manufacturing numbers, where we did see a con contraction in those numbers the first time since 2009. And, of course, the last jobs read was quite weak, 69,000. The market expecting 100,000 here. But if we do see a weak numbers, that's just going to feed back into expectations around our QE3. Now, we have seen Operation Twist being extended to the end of the year year but the end of the year is also when we see some of those bush era tax cuts expiring and of course uh, the market is still a little bit concerned about that uh, debt ceiling in the US as well so the second half of the year could be quite a crucial time uh, for the US and we'll be watching those uh, US job numbers very closely of course this is at a time when we are seeing probably going to see easing out of Europe as well so it does seem the worse the numbers get the bigger the bets that the market makes on more easing and so it does look like 25 basis points by the ECB, as Stephen mentioned, and the Bank of England. The market really just debating whether it's going to be £50 billion pounds or £75 billion, pounds, and that's on a QE program. That's already totaling £325 billion. Pounds. So the worse the numbers get at this stage, it does look like the market's building in a positive reaction or a somewhat positive reaction because the expectation for quantitative easing or easing out of central banks uh, increases. One, because probably all the details haven't come to light, and, but from a p opinion based sort of perspective. We've seen the market somewhat divided as to what Michael alluded to, whether or not the David Jones board did the right thing in terms of disclosure. Did they do the right thing in your opinion? Your opinion, do you think they did the right thing? I guess in terms of disclosure, the more the market knows, the better. But in terms of timing, it comes at a time when we are seeing quite a bit of uh, M&A speculation, especially by private equity funds. We're seeing valuations, especially in that retail and the media sector, uh, at the lowest levels for 2012, and balance sheets quite good. So corporate activity is to be expected, and I guess that just helped the situation in this case. David Jones, if we have a look at his property portfolio, if we have a look at our private equity bids, well, 
well, it's not the first time there's been speculation, but I guess it's the first time that we've seen an announcement really coming through from David Jones that they had received a bid. They did disclose, I guess, the, 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 the shaky nature of it. And if we have a look at who would have benefited in this case, it would have been pretty much bad news for any of the short sellers of David Jones stock. The last ASIC report had about 10% of the stock um, being short sold. So once that uh, news of the bid came through and the stock spiked, we probably s saw a lot of those uh, short sellers closing out their positions or being closed out. So bad news for the short sellers, good news for anyone holding David Jones stock at the 30th of June, so for some of those long fund managers. But for those uh, longer term holders, as long as they didn't buy in between, they're pretty much in the same position as they were uh, before uh, the, the big spike up and then the big spike back down again. Yeah,